So I'm gonna try to help you from my book, You Don't Have to Die Broke. This, what's funny, I'm thinking this today, as we're watching the stock markets now, basically all the indexes are kind of rolling over. A little bit of fight back today, right? What we're hoping is tech is bottom, right? We're hoping tech is bottom, but it looks like the S&P and the Dow are just now rolling over. Shit, I've been trying to play China because China's cheap, but it got cheaper. So I'm obviously wrong. I'm notorious for being a little early, but here's what I'm, a concept. And I'm going through this Jim Rohn. If you don't have my book, you don't have to die broke, you should get it, it's free. Just click my bio link. But Jim, I'm looking at one of Jim Rohn's book because I'm always trying to think of like content. Like, what should I talk about? Because I get kind of bored, you know, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot. Are we, are we on here still? We're on YouTube too, man. Trying to keep this shit simple. Okay, we got people on YouTube and Instagram. Look, all right. <clears throat> so, if you go back and watch past videos, I talk about this idea of the millionaire code. This is a philosophy. It's just a way of thinking is really all it is that keeps you in order. Jim Rohn has this book called The Five Major Pieces to the Life Puzzle. And it's like he's saying, look, these are five things you need to focus on. I talk about in, in on my podcast this idea of the of the triangle, health, wealth, and mindset. And that's kind of what he's talking about in here. But he, he, it's interesting because the very first of his five keys is philosophy. And, and that's, what, that's what religion is, right? It's a philosophy. And when you have a philosophy, it molds and changes how you live, how you value things, how you see things, what your ultimate purpose is. So if you're a very religious person of a particular sect, of a, a particular type of religion, it might change the way you dress, how you eat, where you go on Friday, where you go on Saturday. The money game is the same thing. If you begin to get obsessed with this idea of becoming a millionaire, it's about accumulating either A, money, cash, but it, to save your way to a million bucks, dude, to save it, oh my God, that's a lot. Think on it, man. I mean, just divide it. Just divide a million dollars into 10. You know, what is that? 100 grand, right? Divide 100 grand by 12. You would need to save like nine thousand and what eight hundred dollars, nine thousand six hundred dollars a month for ten years to get to a million dollars. So we see that's a that's an uphill push, right? So that's you can't do that. I mean, you could, I guess. What are you doing in the video, fatty? Why are you so fat? So if we're trying to get to a million bucks, saving it might be off the table. Saving nine thousand eight hundred dollars a month. But so you see, though, the more money you make, you might play the game different. The less money you make, you might play the game different. Either way, it's a game. And you're trying to get assets or items or things. Like today we have tokens, Bitcoin, right? We have ETFs, electronically traded funds. We could take our time, talent, resources, and treasure, the ship, the extra, the margin, the money you don't need. So the money you go out and make, you pay your bills, take care of the kids, do this, that shit that's left, that goes in this game here. You gotta get a little chunk, you gotta get a piece. And the more aggressive you wanna play the game, the bigger the piece. Because the, it comes down to time, right? Amount, and then yield. So if you're just saving money, 10 years, we divide it by, we, we divide a million dollars by 10, we get 100,000, we divide 100,000 by 12, 12 months in a year, comes down to $9,600. I'm just doing rough math, okay? That would be the time component. Shit, that sounds like, a, that sounds hard, man. Like, that seems really difficult. So if I'm gonna do less than $9,800 and I wanna be a millionaire in, in, in 10 years, so if, what if we wanna be it in 20 years? Well, you just back the math out. And so this formula becomes a philosophy. And then you're like, okay, how do I think about this? How do I take my mind? And where could I begin to apply my time, treasure, talent, resources, the money that I don't need, the money that I save, this shit that I've saved, where can I put it so that it gives me some sort of return? So the third element of the millionaire code, time, amount, and yield, yield this is going to help you the less money you have. So if you're only investing $1,000, and the goal's a million, we can do the math. We can project that math based on the yield we think we're gonna get, how long we're gonna put in that thousand dollars. And so what you begin to see is the millionaire code part is that it, 
Why are you grabbing me, man? It's flexible. This cat's an asshole. You should see my other cat. He's worse. That's what the free ebook's about, man. If you really dig in, it's what it's about. So there's a lot of things we could do. Exxon. I'm just picking a stock off the top of my head. Apple. Right? What's another one? We're still live. I don't know how good my connection is. Are we still live? Yeah, we are. I know it's a little dark, man. I apologize for that. I need some set production lights or something. Exxon could be part of this code, but are you going to put all of your money into Exxon? So if you put $9,800 a month, go do the math. I do this for fun all the time. If I had $10,000 a month and I put all $10,000 a month every month into AT&T, how soon until I got to where my dividend was $5,000 a month? Now, you may you say, well, that's impossible. I know, but let's drop a zero. What if I just wanted 500 a month? See, if I go out and buy something that pays me $500 every month, I never have to sell it. Now, I'm still free to go out and get more money to do this thing called the... Hey. He will sit here and fuck with me, watch. This cat here will wait until you, like, you're ready to punch him. Now, I wouldn't punch him, so I love animals. But this guy here, man, will push you to thinking about... Cats are not good people. So the millionaire code time times amount times yield. So as I begin to look at this, there's different assets. Now, what if I can get these assets on sale? What if I can get them 50% off? What if as a philosophy of life, I was allocating money, the margin, the money I didn't need, the money that I was gonna play this millionaire code game with, or I'm gonna try to get rich. And the reason it's gonna work for me is I'm gonna play this game every day. When you take a day off, I'm gonna play this game. In some way, some capacity. Maybe it's through research. Maybe it's through a side job where I get more money. Maybe it's through working on a property. So real estate is one of the ways to play this game. You could buy Exxon, but how weak are your hands? What if you're early? You begin to squirm and get nervous, or you think, no man, playing this game. Take it down a little bit. Take it down a little bit. I get to accumulate a little bit more. Right? I get to buy it just a little bit cheaper. Shit, if in the long run I'm right and I'm down 50, well, maybe 60 is a little better. Why? Because I get more juice on the upside. Because 10% down when it goes 20% positive is not 20%. It's a bigger number, right? And so that's, this, is a, this concept is like a philosophy. So if oil is one of the ways you're playing the millionaire, you could be doing it through real estate. And let's say you can't buy physical real estate. Like, that's not possible for you. You could allocate money to real estate in different ways. There's syndicates. You could go research this. Get on YouTube. Get on Amazon and put in the word syndication. And you can invest along other people like me. I don't run a syndication, but there's people like, who, who are way richer than me that run syndications. They go out and buy apartments. They buy houses. And they let bring people in. And you're partners with them. And you say, well, I don't trust them. That's part of the game, man. Being an investor is about risk. You're going to take on risk. There, that's why there's yield. Where there's no risk, there's no yield. So if you play with less money, right, you're not putting $9,800 a month, you're putting in 1000 You need yield. Yield comes from risk. Risk. So every day as this number grows, as you accumulate more and more money on this path of the millionaire code, your risk goes up. See, when you have $3 million in the stock market, some of you guys are crying because you're down three grand. There's motherfuckers down three million. You think you feel better down three million and three grand? You say, well, I have a lot more money. I feel better about it. Really? You think so? So the next time there's a recession and all, and you got $10 million, guess what happens? You think the $10 million guy steps aside and the recession goes without him? No, man. Landlord struggles. Some people don't pay rent. Foreclosures go up. Banks struggle. There's less shit being put on trains. Trains struggle. Those businesses don't quit. They're still chasing the million dollars. It's harder for sure, right? And then there's other people that are anticipating these things. They're looking forward to these things. You'll hear Buffett talk about be greedy when other people are fearful. What do you think he's doing? He's waiting on this. He's waiting on a 50% drop. No, 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 no. He's literally fucking waiting. Like, please, I have money. Drop, waiting, and then what? Buying. And I'm sure he's got a price point in mind, right? 
But that's a philosophy, dude. That's a philosophy. How do you accumulate if you sell? You know why I got to three million my right now? Hey. I told you. Watch, he's gonna keep on it. Here soon he's gonna jump on me. And when I punch him, don't get mad at me. You see, he's doing it, right? Like he's doing this shit. I had a lady's like, you're mean to that cat. I said, no, that cat's an asshole. <clears throat> he lives in a life of luxury and just goes around fucking with people. So, let's see. Millionaire code, right? If you sell, right? How do you accumulate? Meaning, how do you get 10,000 shares of Exxon if you sold that 3,000? How do you get to 10? People are looking at it as a single transaction. It's not a single transaction. The millionaire code is a thousand fucking transactions. See, if you're putting in 9,800 a month in this game, then it's 12 transactions a year, we said, right? $100,000 divided by 12, you're gonna save 9,000. But we're not doing that, we're doing chunks. So yesterday, Bitcoin suddenly drops 14%, just like that, on a tweet. Now, I have a rule in life, and I should write about it in my book, and you'll hear me sometimes say I'm calling an audible or plan B. And I'm buying when the money flow system doesn't really say to buy. Why? Because I'm buying stupid. And I mean other people's stupidity, not mine. Now, I may be early still. May not be the bottom, but it is a bottom, okay? So, if you remember when Tesla hit, I think it was 580. You know how we went up? And then we came down and we started to bounce and now we're coming down again, right? Right, we got that fake second bounce. A lot of charts will have that, dude. I'm telling you, this will come back. It'll go back up and we'll go to the previous high, right? What? I say, I can't teach you conviction and I can't teach you the history and I can't teach you to fucking commit. I can't teach you uh, grit. Like there's things I just can't show people. I could tell them by Exxon, but they haven't lived in Texas and seen five oil booms and busts and seen what happens when when oil gets smashed, that if you just become accumulator of oil stocks, you can make a lot of money. You could actually get fucking rich if you had enough money. The number of times that if I'd had enough money, I could have got rich in oil, but you know what? My conviction level wasn't what it is today because I've done five of them. So I'm looking forward to number six. You see what oil's doing right now, right? So if you remember on CNBC, Kramer and all them were saying, you don't want to be in oil. Oil is the worst sector to be in. Oil stocks are terrible. Matter of fact, oil went to fucking zero. I'm going to let you in on something. When it went to zero, I was kind of doubting my own conviction for a minute. Like, I'm like, maybe I'm wrong, right? It's free. Now, it didn't stay zero, and I knew it wasn't. You can't do a, an honest, logical study of the economy and the global world and think for a second that there's a time where they're not, we're just off oil. Like, it's just, that's it, just like that. Come on, man. So, I, so you got to stay with your conviction. And what? Now I've made a chunk of money from oil. Oil stocks are flying right now. Um, what do we see down right now? Growth stocks. Right? So how should you be thinking? I'm not talking trading here. I'm talking how, how should you be thinking as a, as a buy and hold, as a person who's going to store, build wealth? Are we still on? Yeah, we're on, man. How should you be thinking right now? You ever heard of a company called Square? How about PayPal? Right? You've heard of PayPal, what is, I don't remember the ticker P, what? Uh, I'm sure you've heard of probably Pinterest, right? You've heard of these, right? These are the type of com companies on sale, Roku. I use Roku every fucking day, Roku. I use that device every day. I'm buying that stock. I use it every day. Millions of people use this every day. Millions of people use Square every day, I use it. I've sold you guys books on, on Cash App. That's Square, right? People are using these every day. These things are on sale big time. How could you play this? Well, one way to play this in your buy and hold, accumulate for life, right, ACC. In other words, for you to, how do you get to 10,000 shares in Kathy Wood's fund unless you bought one share? Meaning, remember, we're not doing 9,800 a month. We're doing $1,000. 
it's going to be transaction after transaction after transaction, transaction after transaction, right? Because we got time times amount times the yield. Well, right now, the yield is that fund is down 50 fucking percent or something. I don't know. What is ARC funds down? Some of it's like, it's close. It's got to be close to 50%, right? This stun has fallen. So now what you're going to see on TV is like, hey, you don't want to own this. This shit is going to zero. Do not do this. It's just bad, 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 bad. That's what the media does. Same thing they did to oil trade. Same thing. Just smashed it. How bad it was. Right? You saw what happened. Bitcoin fell 14% immediately. What's the story? All the negatives of it. Not the positives. Not the, million, not the thousands and thousands and thousands of people that it's made a millionaire. Not the jobs that it's created, the businesses that it's launching, the opportunities created. That's not the story. The story is it uses too much electricity. Not Christmas lights in New York City. Not fucking Las Vegas. Not all your AC. Not all these phones on right now. Not all these fucking cars. Like everything on planet fucking Earth uses a lot of electricity. For some reason, for Bitcoin, it's a problem. How could the possibility of where you store your time, talent, and treasure, wealth, meaning value, how could the thing that's value, which is all of your money, how could that be of less value than Christmas lights or the lights at, in Las Vegas? Like, to me, it's so stupid, a conversation, that smart people still have it amazes me. So these assets are on sale. You could buy individual stocks, and if you have enough money, I would encourage you to do that, because now you get to play the money flow. As they move up, you pull some off as it comes down, and you can begin to do this for the rest of your fucking life. For the rest of your life, you can own some of these stocks. So I've owned Pepsi for like 16 years, and my balance has grown and grown and grown, and I compound the dividend, and every time it would sell off, and consumer staples would go down 50%, and the story would be all growth, and you're never going to get... Never want to own these dumb stocks. Like, who would own a own Campbell's? Like, it, it, it goes way down. Guess what? That's the time you should be buying it. Hmm. Kind of like the story on growth stocks right now. Right? Millionaire code. Now, this is just one part of the millionaire code. You get, you become a millionaire, you don't need to own stocks. You don't need to own real estate. You could just start a business, right? You could just start a business and just earn it. And just earn that money. Who was that? Oh, clean. The cleaners are here. Don't worry. Shit, they need to listen to. Cleaning lady needs to listen to. She's broke. Where's she at? Where's Maria? I bet I asked Maria now. Maria, how much Bitcoin you got? Zero. All right. How much technology you got? It's called the QQQ, dummy. You just simply click it with your thumbs. You own any? It's on sale. You own any? Are you looking at it? No. Okay. You looking at any land or anything? No? Let's see. Are you? I mean, are you looking at? Since you own a business, right? You're you clean. Are you? Are you got to take off chunks, right? We talked about that chunks, pieces. And we got to do what? We got to push it. You got to store it. Even for your business, you should be storing money, right? Retained earnings, they call it. Why? To protect yourself. I don't know. Maybe if you ran a restaurant, what if you couldn't be open tomorrow? That's a possibility. What if your business can't open tomorrow? What if you can't tattoo? What if you can't drive your car? What if you can't load the box? What if you can't fly the airplane? What if you can't be an engineer? What if they close it down? What if you can't do it? Right? This is what this is about. This we're talking about is taking money, right? And what we're trying to do, you know, for me, is turn it into a million dollars because it's a big number. You can begin to look at it. You can begin to see that with this much of wealth accumulated, I can pull this much off and then I can live, right? But here's what I began to this is what helped me. I stopped thinking of it as something down the road. Like, I'm not, fuck retirement. I'm talking about right now. And so I began to see all of this as right now. How much it, dividends am I earning right now? Like, anyone can earn dividends. I should show you the, if I show you this ratio, it would scare the shit out of you. Because it would show you 
how fucked you are. It's just to be blunt. If I showed you this ratio. And here it is. I'm going to show it to you anyway. If you want to do it, you can do it on your own. Go figure up your net worth. Right? You know how to do that. I don't need to tell anybody how to do net worth. Go see how much you owe versus what you have. Extract that. That's your number, right? It ain't that more complicated. It includes your house, blah, 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 401k, savings, everything of value. Subtract from even furniture if it's fucking fancy and subtract it. You get a total. That's your net worth, okay? And let's say that number, we'll keep the math simple, is 100 grand. Now, we want to get that number. My number right now is 3 million. Not that much. Like, I'm just figuring it out. But here's the, here's the part that'll depress you. <clears throat> Go add up all of the passive income you receive. Passive. I don't like this word. But what if this is, is interest payments. Did you get any interest? What would that be? CDs, did you loan anybody money? Are you a hard money lender? Did you know you could do that? Did you do any peer-to-peer -peer lending? Uh, uh, did you own any dividend stocks? So divs. Did you, or you invested in any real estate deals? Or, you know, there's companies like NIRA, syndication deals, they pay you passive income, you invest, you get to do all the real estate shit, but you're investing with somebody else. So there is risk involved in that, right? But that could be one of a bunch of things you do, right? So you have some money in peer peer lending or some shit, right? Some startup, you have a bunch of money in div stocks, maybe you're using the dogs of the Dow, chapter 10 of my, of my ebook, right? Chapter 10 is a super simple way, put it inside an IRA, so you got an IRA here, right? And you're putting in 500 a month, whatever. I think the max you guys, most of you can probably put in is 6,000. I'm old, over 50, so I can put in 7,000. This money can go in there and it will lower my taxes, right? And that money will grow tax-free. So over years, that money is, you're trying to get to this. You're gonna see that slow. 7,000 this year, 7,000 next year, 7,000 next year. The only way that game works is you can't fucking touch it. You got to keep doing it. And if you keep doing it, 20 years, it's a bunch of money. But I'm going to say that's just one of the things that we're doing. So if we're doing the IRA, but I want to do more money than that. But that's a no-brainer. It's stacked up. You get a tax deduction. Try to do it. Put your dividend stocks in there. That keeps you from touching them. But I'm not, in my mind, this is not retirement. It's part of my money now. It's part of my net worth right now. So when I go do my net worth thing, I do, I tell you, I do it every, I do it at least once a month. I go print off all my stocks and you say, well, I don't print them off. I got two, print it. And then at the top, take out and write, I got cash, 8,000 under my bed, 2,000 hidden at wherever. I got this, write it down, print it, put it in a folder. Next month, do it again. That shit should be bigger, right? If we're about this, if it's a philosophy, if we're coming at this every, all the time, so, I mean, if anything, you collected the dividend. So if you got a $100 dividend, with the $100 dividend, it bought you probably two to three more shares. Guess what? Your portfolio went up. You now have more shares of Exxon or AT&T or Procter & Gamble or 3M, right? You have more shares. Now, tech stocks, they don't issue dividends. And so I don't put a lot of those inside of my buy and hold, but I do put them in there when they are on sale. If I can get a company like Uber right? Or Roku. I mean, an amazing company growing that could be a double, a triple, a four times. Fuck a dividend. I need to get a couple hundred of these shares. And when it doubles, and I do this all the time, it goes up a hundred percent. I sell half. This is my rule. I keep the other half and wait for the next sell off to play the game again. I take the other half and I go look for a new speculative play from the speculative play. And over time, if you get this right, this will grow out and grow out and grow out on it. And some of these will 5x, 10x over 10 or 15 years. That's hard to, that's not predictable. You can't predict in this model of the millionaire code. Remember, one thing is an IRA, right? One thing may be your 401k at work, if you understand it. Jesus, make sure you understand it, right? That's one I think. Oh, we're gonna push 25,000 into ARC funds, right? Right now, you're gonna go get $25,000 or... Now here's what I don't want you to do. This is what I wouldn't do. Don't sell shit 
to do this in the sense, don't jump from that investment to this invest, like your move, like what we want to do is all of them. So if we have a rental property, good. We want to keep it. And we want to get another one. Like one a year. Or one every 18 months. Or one every other year. Just buy them. It doesn't even have to be that good a deal. Just a deal. And that becomes part of one of the things we're doing. And as that throws off money and appreciates, we could what? We could borrow against it tax-free, right? And we could take that borrow and we could go buy, say, 50000 in Bitcoin. We're done. Bitcoin's bought. Fuck it. Don't matter now, right? And we just hold it. It becomes what? Part of the big old pie of all these assets trying to get me to what? A million dollars. And they're all different. So owning, I own 15 houses. I bought them one at a time. I wish I could tell you I had a secret. I don't have any secret. I just did what I said. I just saved money. So I'd save like $1,500 a month. This is, how I got, this is how I got so much money in real estate. I'd save $1,500 a month in a checking account. And I got most of that from mowing yards, doing side jobs, shit like that. Am I talking to myself? No, we're still here. I would then take that money. And when I remember, this is 20 years ago. When I got to 10 G's, I started looking for houses. And I'd look at them, dude, I'd look at 30 houses, 40 houses, just keep looking. Shit. Most time I don't even call a realtor, I just go over there, hop the fence and go look around myself. Shit, half the time there's a window open. Don't tell anybody I told you that, but I'll take a ladder, get up on the roof, I ain't even talk to anybody, I'm looking around. And then I'll take off, I just put it back in my truck and leave. Not for me. Or, yeah, maybe we want to look at that. Like, it's just at an aggressive tone. It becomes part of the philosophy of my life. I look at fucking houses. As I'm driving down, I'm like, Rrr. what's up here, man? You own this? I'm telling you, when you begin to push your intent to the universe, and you're like, hey, my name's Jer Is this yours? This is cool, man. You want to sell it? <laughs> All he can say is no, right? So when you begin to talk like that and, and, and push your, and you meet real, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, I'm always looking for houses. Yeah, you put what? I'm putting it out there. And I tell them, look, I'm always looking to buy at least one. So I got a couple cities I've been looking at now. I've established a realtor in both cities. And I keep pushing at him, and I'm like, hey, what's up with this area? Tell me about this neighborhood. Now, he may get, if I sense he gets tired of me, cool, I, that ain't my guy. I got to go get another person. And then I show them. Here's one of the things that I do is I say, listen, I got 15 houses. I want to buy 15 in your town. I do. <laughs> right? Or, hey, I own these, like, I want to buy more stuff. What do you think? And just, just start communicating. That's what the money, like I have a group called the Money Flow Trading Society. I'm not going to get everything perfect. I'm in there like they are. The difference is I'm in there every day. Like I'm going to play this game every fucking day. I've been playing it every day for 20 years from the moment I committed to this. So the one thing I can't teach people is grit. I can't teach people commitment. And I can't teach them conviction. In other words, if I start buying, X, I've owned Exxon stock for like 14 years. Take it to zero. Good. I'll start buying. On the stage ones, I buy some. Maybe one share, maybe 10, maybe 50. Maybe I take equity out of a house. Just so happens I'm fixing to do this. I got a loan coming due. I could stack about 20 on there right now. Think of this. I got a loan coming due. I got four houses up as collateral right now. Four. On a $225,000 note. I only owe 164 now on a five-year adjustable arm. So I stopped doing mortgage, well, I have some mortgages, but I started rolling things into notes. When you get 15, when you get to 10 houses, you get to 10 houses, the bank won't loan you any more money. You're out of your fucking mind or something. Why does this guy have 10 mortgages? The bank gets nervous. Now there's lending institutions that are set up for this. I'm not saying it's weird, but your local bank ain't fixing to run and give you 10 mortgages, okay? You got to be a person of responsibility. I promise you, go try it. It's, it's really difficult. When you get to mortgage five, they're going to try to slow your roll. You're going to have to start looking for alternative ways sometimes to get financing. This can happen to you. Here's what I did. I paid off my first two houses, right? Cash free. So no mortgage. That gives me a little bit more money coming in, right? Now I got some more cash flow. I'm adding that to the money I'm saving. Now I'm saving like three, four thousand a month. Right, which that allows me to repair these. It allows me to save money to buy the next one. Oh, but I gotta go work so that I can pay my bills. I don't wanna use this money to pay my bills, right? Because we're putting in a little number. Remember, to be a millionaire, you need to save 9,800 a month. 
So if I want to stay a millionaire, when I get a million and I don't want to eat it, what? If I'm gonna run out of money in 20 years, if I spend 9,800 a month, no, listen, if I have a million dollars, cash, I could pull 9,800 a month out for 20 years. Long as I die before then, I'm golden, right? Shit, died rich. But the smaller this number starts to get, guess what happens? It starts to fuck with your mind. So old people, they got a mil bucks, they're going to Denny's. It's cheaper. That's the plan? We'll go there, it's cheaper. Senior citizen day. Fuck that. I'd rather spend $300 on dinner. What about that? Meaning, okay, I'm old now. I want $300 dinners, <clears throat> right? I only want to wear Rolexes. I only want to drive nice new vehicles. I only want to vacation in beautiful, right? I mean, that's what I'm looking at. What do you want to do? So as you begin to think that, the only way to think that is to live this, not like this is retirement, meaning with urgency about the day, patient with the long term, impatient with the day to day, meaning you're making yourself stay on this game, this process, but you're patient because you know it's going to take, you know, based on time, times amount, right? times the yield you're getting. And so as you get better at this game, you get to determine the yield. So when I buy a house, because I'm using my own labor, I have people sometimes tell me, oh, that doesn't, well, that doesn't count because I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? That's called sweat equity. So when I, if you bought a house and you don't know how to paint, like you can't do this. You can't put this and do this. I don't know why people can't paint. Like. You drive by and you see their house needs to be painted on the outside. It's like, hey, dummy, it's this. It ain't fucking hard. Get a scraper and scrape it and then come back with kilts and then paint like it's one YouTube video. It is so simple. Everyone's house should be beautiful. There's no reason everyone's house can't be painted. It's dirt fucking cheap. You ever heard that video of the guy? This is a, what I just gave you is a millionaire secret formula. The paint story that I just gave you. Listen. Would you agree if you pull up to buy a property and it's beautifully painted, has a better chance of selling than if it's not? You say, sure, then why live in it? If you can just add value, that's a value add that anybody can do with their hands. That's this entire game. So the way you acquire real estate is what I said. You just begin to push yourself into that place. You first go get the checking account. So when we start playing this millionaire code, we're gonna have Bitcoin. We're gonna have index funds, right? We're gonna be doing dogs of the Dow, right? We're gonna be debt free, right? We're gonna be looking at real estate, right? And all of the, once you begin to build this out, they go on sale. Parts of your portfolio will get fucking smashed. And it doesn't become a game of, oh, I gotta get out of this. No, it's how do I maximize my other assets to buy me new fucking assets without spending my money? What if my assets can buy me these assets on sale? Doesn't it get a little easier to hold ARC into a sell-off when you're not even paying for it if your renters are giving you the money? So as renters give me thousands of dollars this last month, guess what I started doing? Pushing it into shit like Uber and Lyft, Roku. Fuck it, it's their money. Take it down, let's do it again. Let's go down one more time. I'll accumulate there too. Do you see the power and the difference when you, when you begin to see and your shit's diversified. It's not this or that. It's not single family or multifamily. It's yes, yes, yes. That's what the fuck that means. Yes, yes, yes. So if this is on sale, and I get this all the time, hey, Joe, you think I should buy these? Yes. Do you think I should do dividends? Yes. Do you think I should trade? Yes. Should I buy? Yes. All of it. You should do all of it at the same fucking time. Like you can do that. So, but to do that, you have to create a system. The system's called the millionaire blueprint. So you sit down and you print the shit out. And you say, okay, I have this much money. I make this much money. I have this much debt. I have this much fucking time. How much time do I have? Because time is an asset. How much time do I have that could be productive through either sweat equity or fucking just making cash so that I could then do something with the cash? And then guess what? This number, instead of being $100 a month, becomes $2,000 a month. And so backtrack it. Say you got on the game that I'm talking about three years ago. How much do you have now? It's a fuck ton more than you have right now. <clears throat> OK, 
getting a Red Bull, man. Man, I wish I could take you into the money flow. Sorry, YouTube. I didn't see it clicked up. This is what I do one-on-one, -on -one, man. I get people one-on-one, -on -one and I say, let me see your net worth. Now, I'm not a financial advisor, okay? I don't give tax advice. I just tell you what I would do. And I'm always looking at everything like, what would I do? How would I go about it? And the game that I'm talking about playing changes everything. It's like a fucking religion, like I said in the beginning. So I began to look. If you're going to go on vacation, let me give you a, let me take you into the money flow for a second. Some of you guys think it's trading, man. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than trading, man. Let's say we're going to go on vacation. And you've been thinking about an Airbnb property. I'm thinking about one right now. I'm looking at two cities to do this in. Why? Because I got lots of cash. I got excess cash. Because the assets are paying me. So, remember I said I collect almost 2000 a month from dividends. Right? After paying all my bills, I collect about four to 5000 a month in real you know, cash flow. That's 6000 right? I'm not working, like that's not from work. I actually work and do things. I actually own a business I don't even talk to you guys about, right? I do jobs for people. <clears throat> I mean, I make money like everybody else. I get up and go do things, right? Sell books, <clears throat> talk to people, teach this millionaire code, this shit. So my goal, the more of this, that I can do this game that I just showed you that I started with $250, the millionaire code. That's what Robert Kiyosaki's talking about. That's what Rich Dad Poor Dad's about, man. And if you go at this fucking hard, hard, in seven years, you can just walk away from whatever you're doing. You're not free to do whatever you want to do. If you want to paint art, go paint art. Shit, you might get rich at it. If you got enough money to sustain yourself to paint and then you get to just do what you love, you might get good at it. You might get rich at it. Shit, you think you could go be a professional guitar player at 40, why not, right? If you're young enough, or maybe you just want to do what you want to do. Like, have you ever know you watch me work on houses? I, dude, I love that. I'm fixing to go do it now. I love doing it. I love it. It's fun. You ever watch those house shows? And if I get tired, I quit. I own the fucking place. There's no employees. And if I want a beer, I drink a beer. And I, I, if I don't know how to do it, I just stare at it, or I fuck it up, or I go, well, that didn't look good. Go back to Home Depot. Like, it may take a week. You know, fuck it. I've ripped out floor. Oh, shit, one time I. I mean, I've, I've done so many mistakes on that. Well, guess what? I've bought stocks. I know you guys don't believe this because I'm like, oh my God, they're dropping. And they go down. Yeah, no shit. Yeah. Sometimes they don't pay rent. Sometimes I had a tree here fall, smash front of the house, $3,700 of damage. My deductible is $35. I mean, we lost $3,700, okay? But it's not a loss. You still have the asset. I mean, you haven't sold the shares. Like, it's not gone. And, 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 you know, we get a chance. So if a guy bought square at the top, you know, yeah, I get it. He's not happy right now. But, uh, A, maybe in three months it's back to where it was and all your crime was for nothing. Or, B, you're going to look back and say, man, I wish I'd have bought more. Like, I've never owned a stock that went higher that I didn't go, man, I wish I had more. Like, I have said that so many times to myself. Well, the only way to do that is to actually do it, right? I mean, like you ever see like those, some of the BIOS tech stocks, they go up huge. Well, the only way to make a lot of money when they go up huge is to have money in them and to have a bunch of them because we don't know which ones. So biotechs could be part of this big pot. It is for me, I own about 10 of these. And, and when I'm, I'm building them up, and so I want the 10 to be legitimate projects. Like this, I don't want to say angel investing, but if you're on Shark Tank, they're not paying them dividends. They're giving them fucking money, and then they're hoping in the next year, two years, three years, they get paid. But for every 10 they put money in, the shit goes up a 1,000%. And they're patient. They don't know when or why or if the nat it's going to catch on or for an ad campaign. Like, they're investing. That's what, when you get into penny stocks and you get into biotechs, that's what you're doing. So you better get your mind around that's the game I'm playing, and it's just part of 
the millionaire code, which includes me living, what, debt free? I mean, what happens if you put a car payment every month into penny biotech stock, just fucking pounding it, just all the time? You get like 20 of these and you start just building positions. Not all, like you're just throwing money at it every month. I'm putting $500 toward this. I'm not selling any of these motherfuckers and I'm just putting money in it. And that's just one of the games that I play. It is for me as our dividend stocks. Remember I told you I put 700 a month. What was it? 750 a month. I commit to the dogs of the Dow strategy. Chapter 10, $750 every month I put in dogs of the Dow strategy. Now you may not have that number. So that number is going to be smaller for you, right? You get it? And so, but you have to start with one of these. So one of the things I put out yesterday was, listen, if you're not in Bitcoin, I don't know if Bitcoin's gonna go up. I'm convicted it will. I got that conviction by doing a 100 hour deep dive. So a guy named Michael Saylor said, listen, if you ain't done 100 hours, don't really give a fucking opinion about your opinion. And I got to thinking about that. That kind of applies to everything in life. If you haven't studied this for 100 hours, I highly doubt you even know what the fuck you're talking about. This ain't about brains. If this was about brains, all smart people would be rich. I know a lot of broke smart people. Lots of them. All kinds of people that I'm friends with that are doctors. I'm, I'm in my 50s now. I have doctors that are friends. They're not as rich as me. It, they're smarter. They made more money than me. They make shit tons more money than me. Shit, I don't even have a job. Like they have a business and money's coming in and they're not multimillionaires. Why? Because he went days and days and days and days and weeks and weeks and days and months not doing this, not putting anything in, not focused on it at all. And a week goes by. You know what can happen in a week when you have a biotech portfolio? You could have one go up 500%. And what if you sold some of that and bought some Bitcoin? You still got this, and now you got Bitcoin. So when Bitcoin goes down, guess what? This may go up, and then you buy more Bitcoin. Or maybe the Bitcoin goes up real high, and you buy some biotechs. But in order to understand this exchange, you have to be in the exchange. You have to be in the business. So here's what helped me. I began to look at this. I'm trying, I'm gonna tell you what, what, what helped me, guys, listen. This is, what I'm talking here is philosophy now, not, not particulars, okay? If I was sitting with you right now, and you showed me what you have, and you're hustling, you're making money, what we would look at is how do we take that, your time, your talent, your treasure, and how do we apply it, and how do we build it out in, in different things? So what they call it diversification. That doesn't mean you can't be heavy one thing. So I have friends that... They're, you know, I mean, they're just almost 100% in crypto. Cool. Fine. But can you understand that right now, like you don't have to be a genius to go look at, back to what I was saying, I'm keeping it simple, ARC funds. Go look at her top 10 holdings, her top 10. And buy them. And let's say you got a little money, you're balling, right? Well, you, you got 30 grand, fuck it. You lose it, you get another thing. What do you care? You go put... 2,500 in each. And how long are you gonna hold this? Forever. Forever. That's what we're thinking right now. Does forever change? Yeah, it could change. So three years from now, it may look different. You get what I'm saying? But if our mentality, if our conviction, if our belief, 100% in ourselves, because we go read and we go, who is this? What is this? Who is she? And we deep dive it and you go watch some fucking videos, you don't have to do 100 hours to get that this is a good idea, right? And then you see the top 10, and you say, okay, right now, she's the worst. You wanna buy the best when they're the worst. <laughs> like, if, 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 imagine if Peyton Manning had a really bad year, and they're like, fuck, dude, I think he's done, and you're a team that's losing. Maybe we recruit him. What if we could get him for half price? You, you get what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about. Like, you now have a player that all this person needs is the winds to change, sectors to rotate. Wait, Jared, are you saying that oil goes up and then oil comes down and then rates go up and rates come down and inflation goes up, inflation goes down and new people are born and new technology. Yeah, it's called the money flow. Life just flows, man. 
it flows. And sometimes it's good to be a landlord, and sometimes it's not. Right now is the seller's market. I'm looking at unloading some properties. Why? To get cash to buy bigger properties. So if the millionaire code, right? This is the millionaire code. Watch this. Watch this played out. 16 years ago, I paid $42,000 for that yellow house that you see on my store. It'll be on there today. This number adjusts for inflation is probably like you buying a hundred and thirty thousand dollar house. This is not. This is nothing. This is nothing intel. This is nothing spectacular. This house was on a double lot. I thought that added value. If I fix this house up, it's inside the city in the avenues, which is a nice area. If YouTube goes off, I just battery went dead, guys. In this house, I paid forty two thousand dollars. I went on to spend about forty five fixing it up. It took me eight nine months. You could divide 45 by eight, what is that, 5,000 a month. At the time I bought this, I had four other houses. I had four, right? I got my lawn care business, so I got business. I'm working part-time, so half-time, right? I got about 800 a month cash flow from the houses. I'm pushing that to an account, right, to buy more houses. I'm working and I'm pushing all the money from my business into investments I'm taking the half that I make to pay bills at home, and then my spouse work too. So we use her salary and what I made on a half job. Everything I did outside of 20 hours at my part-time job was to invest. I wanted to accelerate this. I knew that if I could do hard for seven to eight years, I could become a multimillionaire without having a, a fancy job, without any degree, like I could just become rich because I could just devote all of my time, talent, and treasure and push it into things that then I read compound and I kept pushing it. And if I could make this business grow and I wasn't eating any of the money, so if I could get my business to say two to three thousand or my side hustle to two to three thousand and I don't need any of it to eat because the spouse is working and I'm using my part time and so we live below our means and the way you get rich is you take money you don't need. It's the money you don't need over here. And let's say that number we said to get to a millionaire in 20 years we need 9,800 a month. But that's savings. Remember, yield, amount times, you know, time times amount times yield. So this house that I bought for 42, and I put 45 into it, cash, I invested into the house. No loans, I, I literally put my money, just pushed it, pushed it, pushed it, pushed it, pushed it, saved nothing, barely put any money in the stock market, push it, why? Because this was everything right now. Meaning all of the assets, the other assets were to help me, assist me, Everything is about this one thing. And so we're pushing it in because there's a completion date. When it's done, boom, guess what? Our, I didn't lose the money. The money's in equity. When I was done, the house was worth like $95,000. Paid 42, put 45 in. Is that a great return? No, but I didn't lose anything. The money's still there. I could go get it out. But here's what I did. I leave it in there, right? I leave it in there. I'm collecting rent. I go back to putting money in stocks and doing what I do. Now I got a fifth rental. I only got a $42,000 mortgage, right? It means my payments are like 280 and I'm renting it for 1100 a month. <laughs> That's it, what, what is that? My cash flow is now what? Like, let's just say six, 700 a month. So yeah, I lost the 45, but now I got 600 a month times 12, right? Was that 7,200? So what, in four years I got all this money back. Oh, but I still got the money. The money's still there, man. It's in the equity of the home. But I got the money back from the cash flow of the rent. So in four or five years, I got my 45 back. I still got the 45 in there. So now I got a house that's appreciated for five years, right? It was 90, what did we say, 95,000. Now it's what, what, 130? The whole thing is mine, right? Just, and then eventually I knocked the mortgage off. But so now, fast forward, fast forward 16 years, and it's worth about 225. I was going to try to get 250 but, and there's no mortgage on it right now. So you see the millionaire code, right? I'm sorry, YouTube, it's just going to cut off. I, my battery wasn't full. So it's just going to cut off. So what happens? 45,000 in 16 years. 
becomes 225, right? But it's more than 225 because it's producing cash flow. There is no mortgage, and it rents for about 16 to 18,000 a year. So it's worth future cash flows too, to me, inside of a portfolio that also includes Bitcoin, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, which everyone should have it now. Goddamn, go click my link, go to Coinbase, join, do it with me. And then go, guess what? They'll pay you to learn. Listen, Coinbase will give you $3 to watch a two minute fucking video on crypto and there's like 20 of them. You can get 50 bucks in crypto just from watching videos. You get paid to learn. It's so, it's stuff, stupid easy. I don't know why that's not promoted. And, and then they give you 10 bucks for putting money in. Why? Because they know if you get into it, you're gonna put more in that, right? It's beautiful though. What great marketing. Like, oh, instead of paying for a commercial, I'm just gonna pay you to watch my commercial. It's, it's beautiful. But anyway, 40 becomes this. Oh, but guess what? I got 15 others of these going right now. So when I bought that house for 42, a year later, I bought another house. So there's a house out there that's 15 years old. And then there's a house that's 14. There's a house that's 13. There's a house, there's a house I just bought last year. There's a house I'm looking at buying. Why? Because I'm keeping this game going. And as I roll it forward, the snowball gets bigger and bigger and bigger. The dividends get bigger and bigger, right? And as you begin, oh. So back to that note I was talking about. But this started for me with $250 in an E-Trade account, learning about dividend stocks, and then learning about penny stocks and growth stocks and Bitcoin. Which one should I do? All of it. Should I trade or invest? Both of them. Like, why are we limited? Why are you limited, man? Why don't you do all of it? Inside of me saying you should do all of it. Be careful of this. If you drip a little, drip a little, drip a little, drip a little, drip a little. There's time for that because you want to establish positions. But I think you need to, if you look, read what I, the 10 pillars of success I put out, part of it too is establishing, uh, uh, focusing your time and money. Meaning there's a time when everything really needs to be focused on this one thing. And it, it doesn't mean I sell the other things. That's what I'm trying to get across. So when I said that house, that $42,000 house that needed $45,000 in work, when I said it became the priority, I didn't go sell my stocks. I helped them, right? I held them. So over here, I had this little portfolio, like 15 stocks, little dividend stocks. Well, guess what they're doing? Well, I'm over here putting all my money, all my attention right now is going on this property. All of it. All of it. I mean, maybe you put a dollar over there just to keep you in the thing over there. Like I do, I do a minimum of $20 every day in Bitcoin. That's not me considered buying Bitcoin. When I buy Bitcoin, it's like 500,000, 2,000, 3,000. This $20 a drip is just to keep me in the game, baby. Keep me looking at it. Oh, I'm buying, I'm on it. I'm thinking about it all the time. Every day there's a little drip going in. You should be doing that and stuff, man. That's what when me going over and painting the house. That's me dripping on that house, right? When I cut, when I'm not, when I'm not paying interest out, and I'm collecting, that's what dripping back in. So that number, you thought I lost track, huh? Come on, man, I lose track. Take your net worth. Go get your passive. How much did you make in passive? That would be interest, dividends, royalty. Should I made eight hundred dollars last month in royalties? Uh, I made interest. I collected 1800 in dividends. I collected 900 in royalties. I collected about 200 in interest. And I remember my passive from rental real estate is about 5000 So this is what I collected in passive. Just roughly. There's probably more. Okay. So add that up. Six. Let's say seven. Eight thousand. Right. Thousand a month. Multiply that times twelve. You're gonna get what? What is that? Let's say a hundred thousand dollars. You would divide that number by your net worth. So you, you divide this. You, you put your net worth into this. So you take that hundred thousand and divide your net worth into it. It's gonna give you a number. If you're rich and you're killing it, you're gonna have. 0.5 or higher. Most people have 0 0.002. This number will scare you. 
It is how much money do I have that comes to me that I don't do anything for. It's the passive rich, I forget what they call this formula, but take your passive income, the total for the year, take your net worth and divide this by this. So divide your net worth into that number. It's going to give you a number. Um, it's pretty low for most people. We want that number to be going higher. The rich people all have about 5 to 7%. If it's too high, I think at one point mine was 6%. What that means is your net worth makes money. So if you have a $3 million home in California and you have no mortgage, and you can sit down and come up with the actual appreciation of the house, you could say, okay, this house appreciates by 25000 we're going to call that passive income. It is passive net worth increase, right? But it's not actually passive in the sense that like you didn't get any money. It's in equity. You could eat it. There is ways to get that out. And that's why people will say a personal home is kind of like bad debt almost in a way because you can't readily use it or eat it or invest it. You can, but it's not the same as doing it with a rental property, right? Because ultimately this is, this is where you live. Um, now, I'm a big time pro proponent of owning real estate. Uh, uh, even your own home. Like, I think you should own your own home, but that's a different conversation. So, amount, right? You, this has got to become a philosophy. Amount, um, time, times amount, times yield. That's the millionaire code. Right? That's what we're watching. And this number here is where we're trying to get to. And I'm trying to make the case, and what my little message here was about, is a life philosophy of amount is is not <clears throat> I'm making this I'm making this I'm making this it's this amount this base is growing it's growing it's growing so I don't get to 15 houses if I sell my properties at house number three because it's it's kind of hard being a landlord it is it's called it's a fucking pain in the ass like getting rich is pain in the ass sometimes it sucks man like a tornado hits the house I got fucking problems I got 15 insurance. Like, I have people who have a hard time paying rent on time. I got mortgages and notes and bills. Like, I have a lot of shit to pay, right? Just to run these 15 houses is three different accounts, right? An accountant, a lawyer, a fucking real estate person, right? Oh, I got an insurance person I got to talk to. What? I got different lawn people. I got construction people. This is a fucking push. You think that's easy? All of that is on top of you going to work, having kids, a wife, family oh now you manage assets so this game when you say you want to step in and you want to try to become a millionaire real fast okay tough guy but most people don't understand the push in this there can't be no fucking days where there's no money coming in or you're not pushing it or, or you're you're not doing it in seven to ten years so the way most people live there's no way they get there in seven to ten years they can't they consume too much they have too much time that's just dead it's just dead time there's, there's no money coming in, there are no dividends, there's nothing passive, there is no rent collection, there is no interest earned, there are no royalties. If they're not at work, there is no money coming in. That's fine, so if that's the situation and that's where we all start, I now gotta begin to utilize this time. How much could I work, right? And what would be my return on that? And what could I do with that? And so that part that I don't need, that money I don't need, that's the money I'm playing with. And so if you've structured your entire life where you consume all you make, and then anyone, once you've consumed all of that, you need to rest. And then go make more and consume all of it. Give it to other people. Oh, here's student loan. Here, credit card. Here, car. Everyone can have my money but me. I don't want any fucking money. Here, oh, I got it. Here, you want some? You get some. He gets some. It's not this first. What if you begin to live for that first? There's people who actually make this sound like a bad idea. They're like, what are you talking about? What if you wanted to get rich? What if you wanted to get into shape? What would you do? Just go, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, but how could we do it? We all know. What if I wanted to play the guitar? It ain't a big fucking secret. It's called practice. But I gotta have an instrument. So I gotta have an E-Trade account, right? Doesn't have to be E-Trade. Shit, use mine. I get 20 bucks. Or is it 50? I don't remember. Fuck them. I don't want their money. Just go open the account. TD Ameritrade. Right? How are you going to buy Bitcoin if you don't have a Coinbase account? These are just things you click the button. Right? 
you got a Coinbase account, you got an E-Trade account. And what if, remember I talked about syndications, you can get into those for like 5,000 a month. So we could get some real estate exposure through a syndication, right? Syndication. We can go get 5,000 bucks, man. That don't sound hard. Oh, we, so we got our Bitcoin, right? We got our dividend stocks going, right? And now we got some real estate action, some RE. Anybody can do this. Anybody, you just gotta be 18 years old with money. That's it. The only fucking reason you don't own real estate is you're too fucking lazy to go look up syndications or not willing to take the risk or just don't give a fuck. And so every week that goes by you're not in one of those deals, you're not any richer. And so every fucking week that goes by that you don't own Exxon or AT&T or any number of these stocks, guess what? You're just not fucking richer. And so as you begin to study, as I begin to, and I realized I became fucking obsessed because I realized right here, this was the grand fucking enemy of everybody, time. It's what you allocate your time on. Hey, get out of here, go. Fuck out of here. How about that? My shit just went away on uh, Instagram. Man, I was just going to. I'm gonna keep this shit rolling. Hey, get the fuck out of here. We're gonna keep it rolling, man. We're gonna keep it rolling. All right, we're back on. And so I talked about time. Time and allocation of resources. If you get on this, if you're single, God bless, you can do this so good. Doc, I envy you, dude. I don't mean envy like I, I want to be single or anything. I just mean to be young and not be enamored and not be sidetracked and not have some dipshit spouse that wants to do dumb shit with your money. Like, you know, and I, you know, and I mean, or something. You can have a great spouse who kills it. I don't know. But what I'm saying is, the people that I see who run into problems, that's that's what they have. And so they can't get going. Nobody's going to back their idea. But you don't need people to back your idea but you, right? So you have to, and all this, so go. Get out of here. Go. Go. I told you guys what he was going to do. You're lucky he was being recorded. He's lucky. See, I'm smart. All you cops, listen up. Stop hating people when they have a camera on you. Right? Don't be stupid. So the million code, right? We're trying to get to a milli. Time, what I just talked about. Time. You have to live somewhere. Right? If you're on the millionaire code and you're doing this every day, and we're talking about utilizing all our time, that doesn't mean you're working all the time. People misunderstand what I'm saying. It means you have money in things working all the time. So your living situation, if you're single, could become one. Because your plan, guess what? You can sell your home every 2.5 years. You can, tax free. So if you were to buy a fucked up house, like a lot of you guys are single, and you got a job, and you got decent credit, go buy these houses you see me working on. Live in one bedroom and work on it. Like, it's so easy. That game is so fucking easy. You just have to go there. That's it. And listen. You just go buy an old big house and you're like, yeah, look at that crap. Fuck it. We'll fix it next month or the month after. We have time. We're living there. And you could do this as a couple too, but it's hard to it's hard to get two people on this. But if you do and you guys don't have a lot of baggage and kids and all this shit, you can move to these neighbors, buy these houses, live in them, fix them up with your own labor from YouTube with the idea that in two and a half years, we're going to sell this damn thing. And we make a hundred, like it's so easy. Like it, the hundred thousand part is easy. You're going to get a lot of that. You're going to get 12 of it just from painting the fucking place, right? And then you're going to get two years of appreciation. And then if you bought it cheap and you fixed it up and it makes it look nice and like you fixed all the windows yourself, it ain't that damn hard. You got two years to learn it. And so this, this one trick, this one hack, whatever you want to call it with the house. And if you take this. Now you got 100K. And the guy says, well, I want to put it in Bitcoin. No, man. No. Roll this shit into another one. And do it to a bigger one. 
Maybe this time we buy a Ford Union. And we flip that out. <laughs> you probably wouldn't be able to flip the Ford Union. They're going to count that as a rental because you got people in it. But you could, you could turn it into a four unit while you're there and flip that out to an investor. Fuck yeah, I didn't even think about that. That would be the way to get around that. Fuck some rent. We're going to do the flip. That's one thing, right? That's one way. Like, I got to live somewhere. So what if I'm flipping where I live or I'm built like that? That's just one thing off the top of the head. It could be where you work. It could be what you do. And so you may know things from where you work. Maybe you work at Raytheon. Maybe they offer share purchases at the company you're at. Of course you do that. Like, come on. If someone's matching you money, this is a no-brainer. But you would believe the number of people who don't even take free money that's offered at work because it comes out of their check. Of course it comes out of your check. It's the millionaire fucking code. You take money from yourself and you put it into things that will store and multiply. That's in brokerage accounts. So you have to have brokerage accounts. All rich people have brokerage accounts. If you don't have one, you'll never be fucking rich. Brokerage accounts, right? What else you need? Insurance. You have to protect your wealth, right? Right? So you... As we begin to see this big picture, we need different assets. So right now, cute, cute shoes on sale. I haven't even looked at this. I don't fuck them. We'll look at them in a minute. You know what to do. Arcs on sale. All growth stocks are on sale. Maybe I need to start allocating money to it, right? Maybe instead of being a little bitch, I start buying things. I don't know. That's an option, right? So, that, but guess what? We got to be willing to do that. We talked about that. We when I bought the forty-two thousand dollar messed up house. You don't think I cried a couple times? You don't think I second guessed that? You don't think 12,000 in and all of a sudden we found 8,000 more in repairs that we didn't plan on? You think that shit felt good? No, that's called investing. That's called risk. Risk is why there's fucking yield. The only reason there's yield is there's risk. So if risk scares you, then you can't get rich. You have to be able to eat rich. You have to be able to eat risk. You have to be able to, to like be greedy when other people are fearful. You have to eat that shit. That, you know, that's, that's, you know, con conviction. I can't teach that. That's belief. I can't teach that, right? I can't make people study history on YouTube. You just fucking type it in. Like, they always come 